Here we are at the RAC Club in London and we've caught up with Sky Sports F1's Princess of the Pit Lane, Natalie Pinkham. Oh, quite an introduction. <laughs> you like that, Natalie? I like it, yeah. Um, here we are with Australia looming large. Yeah. Have you done your homework? Are your bags packed? Bags aren't quite packed yet. I mean, listen, if last year taught me one thing, it was that you, you can pack in five minutes. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm the master of packing now. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're really excited to get the new season underway. And mm. um, it has actually been a fairly long winter's break. So you do come yeah. itching to get back involved. And I mean, we went on enough planes last year to last a lifetime. I, th I worked out I did 58 flights last year. Good grief. Because that included a few other little trips in between yeah. and various features that we did, but that was a lot of flying. And any occasions when you thought, oh, we should pack a jumper? Plenty of times, <laughs> plenty of times, because you just always assume you're following the sun, and you are to a certain extent, mm. um, but there were a few occasions when I didn't pack appropriately, <laughs> put it that way. Okay, well, on, on race day, I, I guess you're perhaps not the most popular person, because if you're chasing <laughs> after someone, it means they've messed up. Do you? It's a good point. Do you ever get people going, oh, here she comes, and you're having to really peg after them or oh, there's plenty of times like that yeah as you say um during the race if they mm. have to talk to me before the race is over it's because they've crashed out and the last thing they want is a mic shoved under the nose but yeah. um the drivers are all great they kind of know what's expected they know their fans want to know what's happened so yeah. um, we're the conduit for that and um they're mm. all great i mean considering they've just had some huge high-speed crash yeah, yeah exactly you know and a bad day at the office as yeah. we would see it um they're always pretty good at having a chat and normally they want to vent a bit mm. they want to tell us what happened they want to explain yeah. particularly if they don't think it was their fault so we're going to give them the platform to do that yeah have you, have you ever done that where you've asked a question and then you bit your lip thinking oh he's going to go here uh -oh. and the touch paper's mm. been lit and no, do you know what? I remember one time in Singapore when uh, Michael Schumacher crashed out. This was a couple of years ago. Mm. And um, I just saw this huge pile of people. And I knew that Schumacher was at the bottom of it somewhere because yeah. they were all clambering to get to him. <laughs> and at one point, I did get in amongst it and asked him, first and foremost, was he OK? Because, you know, he'd had a big shunt. Mm. And at that point, a German journalist jumped over the top of me and actually <laughs> mounted me <laughs> at the back. I was like, what is going on human here? Human pyramid. There you go. Super. But um, no, I think uh, they're human beings at the end of the day. And yeah. you, the first thing you need to ask is if they're OK, all in one okay. piece. How do you actually keep up with what's going on in the race when you're running around the, uh, the pit lane? That the is a very good question. That is a good question. Well, we've got a, a lovely rigger called Jack who comes with me with a monitor and uh, sort of follows around behind me holding right. the monitor. So I'm obviously li listening to Crofty and Martin on the comms anyway. So yeah. you can keep across stuff. And, and, and then Jack brings this monitor and I do watch right. the race as well. But as you say, when you're jumping between the backs of the garages to find out what's happening, yeah. you often miss something that's been going on in the race, particularly afterwards when you talk to them in the pen mm. and a driver that's perhaps had a fairly indifferent race and finished outside the points comes wandering up and wants a chat. You think, I have no, no idea, idea what happened to your <laughs> race. We were too busy watching something else, you know. Yeah. But um, that's all part of the challenge. It's all good fun. So when you're at home, do you miss Jack not being there with a the monitor? So you can't <laughs> yeah. so well, you're want to watch your favourite programme and he's not there. That's you're a looking good around. point. Yeah, where is Jack when you need him? Yeah. OK, well, you're a bit of uh, an adrenaline junkie, aren't you? You're like your, your yes. sports, an active runner. Yes. Does that help? Because you've they've put you through the mill a bit with uh, yeah. Sky Sports F1. There was, uh, I seem to remember Malaysia. <laughs> you were kitted out in full driver's oh, gear, yeah. running up to the first bend and then sort of collapsing in all that heat. Do you know what? I wish there'd been some kind of extra century ability in the television for you at home to know how to hot that it. was. I mean, it was like running through syrup mm. and your kind of concentration goes, but it just gives you some idea to how tough and much of a physical challenge it is for the drivers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's important to keep fit because I think Ted actually attached a pedometer to his foot and we'd walk something like really? 12 miles in a weekend, mm -hmm. just up and down the pit lane and... Wow. Yeah, it's all good it's fitness. Good fitness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially if you're wearing all that gear and, yeah. and poor Jack's yeah, carrying the monitor yeah, as well. well yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jack wasn't there for that bit, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, fair weather monitor carrier. Yeah. Um, no, it's good fun and it's all just part of the job, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to be active and you've got to be able to respond quickly. Hmm. Um, be interesting to see what happens this year because I'll be doing a bit more 
actual presentation work as yeah, opposed the F1 to show. so I'm going to be in high heels doing all that running right there you go that's an extra challenge <laughs> <laughs> so not uh, got any superman booth where you can go and quickly get changed there will between. be plenty of that yes <laughs> I will be jumping between the two roles yeah um, doing the F1 show on the Friday night and then uh, pre presenting a third practice on Saturday morning mm. and then changing quickly back into my reporter gear it's quite a big role for you now though isn't it yeah. it's a lot of extra work you've taken on yeah I do you know what I think it's okay because I think we're all kind of absorbed in the work side of things you have to kind of mm. keep across everything that's happening anyway yeah. on an f1 weekend to be actually working doing that is mm. is no difference to doing it anyway does, does that make sense yeah, it does yeah, yeah you know we 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 watch all the practice sessions and we make extensive notes and we talk to all the drivers it's just mm. often you guys at home don't see that so i'm i'm relishing the challenge it'll be good okay uh, testing out in Barcelona, you yes. must have picked up the mood of some of the drivers. Mm -hmm. Do you think anyone coming into Australia, someone's feeling a bit confident, a bit more confident than perhaps he's letting on to the rest of us? Or? Oh, listen, I think there's plenty of that that goes on at testing, and it's yeah. a big old poker game, isn't it? Mm. You don't want to give anything away because, mm. uh, well, you want to get to Australia, cards close to your chest, and then yeah, yeah. perhaps bring a few surprises. But mm. I think it's impossible to predict at this stage of the season. Yeah. And even when we get to Australia, I mean, you saw Jensen win in Australia last year yeah. and then had a couple of shocking races after that. So yeah. you can't make predictions, and that's what's mm. fascinating about Formula 1 at the moment. Some drivers are better at hiding emotions than others, aren't they? There's, Very true. There's Lewis and then there's Kimi. It's Very different. true. That's, yeah. Um, I did a great shoot with Kimi in Moscow at the weekend. Mm. And... Uh, we went ice driving together. Oh, wow. I went racing on ice, yeah. Um, I actually hadn't slept because we went straight from the F1 show, flew through the night, and then because of the time difference, by the time you land, it was time to go straight to work. Right. Um, but the adrenaline was just such that you just kept on going. Yeah. Kimi was on the best form I've ever seen him. Really? It's brilliant. When, when can we see that? That will be going at Malaysia coverage. Right. OK, we'll have to keep an eye open yes. for that one then. Let's get some pink and predictions from oh, you then. Oh, no! Yes, not predictions. Put you on the spot here. Um, Whatever I say, it's just a stab in the dark, isn't it? Because nobody yeah. knows. And talking to the boys this morning, mm. no one's prepared to make a prediction because you end up looking a bit silly. Yeah. I think That's what we want you to do. Oh, right, I see. <laughs> then we can come back and chase now. you afterwards. Going, yeah. What do you know? Um, yes, well... Um, I mean, I think that uh, Jensen Button's always incredibly relaxed and mm. confident, but he just seems even more so this year. Right. I think Lewis leaving the teams, he's sort of puffing his chest out, he's spreading yeah. his wings a bit. I think he likes his car. I think uh, there's, it's actually been fairly different to the car he had last year, even though it's all the cars are an evolution of it. There are no yeah. major uh, changes to the cars, no huge technical changes mm. um, but he's confident I think the Mercedes despite what a lot of people said is much better than they thought yeah. um, you know when we were talking before Christmas everyone's saying oh you know has Lewis made this big mistake and suddenly mm. like mm, might be a canny old decision that because yeah. the car's looking quite good mm. so um, I think I don't think we'll get seven different winners from seven different races as we did last yeah. year but that would be pretty awesome wouldn't it yeah um, what do you want me to predict? The um, race, race winner in Australia? If you can't give us uh, your tip for the championship, give us your tip for Australia. Before I the race is finished. I would like to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to give you my tip for the championship. Go for it. I, I reckon the championship will go um, Button, Alonso, Vettel. Wow, top three. Top Superb. Three. You heard it here first. Now, one last question, yes. Natalie. I heard Martin Brundle call you Pinky this morning. Yeah, <laughs> Pinky Pants. Is it Pinky? Is it Splats? <laughs> oh, yeah. Georgie calls you Splats. Yeah. That's a boarding school thing. Just Splats rhymes with Nats, I yeah. think. Um, God, they call me anything but Natalie. <laughs> Right. By the sounds of it. <laughs> I suppose that's the nature of uh, sport. We love our nicknames, yeah, don't we? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pinky to most people um, okay. for obvious reasons. All right. Pinky, thank you very much no, for your time. And hopefully pleasure. we can catch up with you during the season and, yeah. and get your, your latest thoughts or whatever part of the world we can track you down in. Love to see you. Thanks Super. a lot. Thanks.